Everywhere you look around, there's a company connected to a logo, whether big or small. And today, we're going to get into the origins of Smokey Bear. spring of 1942, a Japanese submarine surfaced near the coast of Southern California and fired a volley of shells at a Santa Barbara oil field. The news of the attack on the mainland shocked the country. Many citizens feared that further attacks in that region would not only bring disastrous loss of life and property, but could turn the nearby national forest into a raging forest fire. With the country at war, most of the experienced firefighters had gone to serve in the armed forces. Fire prevention and forest protection became a matter of national importance. Citizens had to be reminded to be more careful with fire because it was estimated that nine out of ten forest fires were preventable. So in 1942, the United States Forest Service organized the Cooperative Forest Fire Campaign. The campaign officials sought the aid of the newly formed Wartime Advertising Council. This volunteer agency was composed of dedicated people who donated their time and talents to help the United States government get important messages across to the people. The Wartime Advertising Council used their creative talent, the advertising agency of Foote, Cone, and Belding Honig, to write and design colorful ads for the new fire prevention program. The Wartime Advertising Council, later to become the Advertising Council Incorporated, grew increasingly successful. State and federal forest officers were also lending their assistance to the success of the program. The use of an animal character to gain the public's attention was suggested. Naturally, everyone thought of Bambi. Walt Disney graciously donated the character for a fire prevention poster. The success of this poster proved that an animal was an excellent media tool. But Bambi was only on temporary loan from Walt Disney. An original character had to be found that belonged only to the Cooperative Forest Fire Campaign. In August of 1944, artist Albert Staley painted a bear pouring a bucket of water to drown a campfire. The bear, appropriately named Smokey, was used for the 1945 fire prevention campaign. Smokey Bear's appearance on posters and cards soon made him a popular figure. Smokey was so successful that artist Staley was asked to do two more paintings for the 1946 and 47 campaigns. Compared to today's pictures, these early Smokey posters look almost like a different bear. But the identifying ranger hat, shovel, and blue jeans were there, plus the confident manner in which he stated his fire prevention message. These were enough to fix him firmly in the affection of the American public. The artist who was responsible for reshaping the way Smokey looked was Rudy Wendelin. Rudy became Smokey's official artist until he retired in 1973. Soon after Wendelin started painting the new Smokey in 1946, the associates of Foot, Cone, and Belding Honig suggested the famous slogan, Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. When Smokey came to radio in 1947, a noted radio personality of Washington, D.C., named Jackson Weaver, became the official voice of Smokey. Legend persists that he accomplished the familiar voice of Smokey by putting his head in a barrel. By 1950, Smokey had become very popular. When a raging fire in the Lincoln National Forest made a bear cub an orphan, he was flown to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., where he became the living symbol of forest fire prevention. Celebrities such as Edward P. Cliff, chief of the U.S. Forest Service, and Hopalong Cassidy came by to pay their respects. By 1952, Smokey Bear was attracting commercial interests. In order to bring the use of the Smokey Bear symbol under the control of the Secretary of Agriculture, an act of Congress was passed and signed into law by President Eisenhower. The act authorized collected fees and royalties 
charged for the use of the smoky symbol to be used for additional promotion of the program. One of the first fire prevention programs funded by these collections is the Junior Forest Rangers. Since 1953, children who write letters to Smokey in Washington, D.C. to become Junior Forest Rangers receive a personal reply from Smokey. By 1965, the volume of letters was so great that Smokey Bear received his own zip code. He's the only celebrity ever to have this honor. In 1966, Smokey starred in a highly successful television adventure program on the General Electric Fantasy Hour. This program opened the door to Smokey starring in his own half-hour animated television series in 1969. An educational message on conservation was worked into each program, and Smokey was able to present his forest fire prevention message directly to the viewers. When children playing with matches became a growing cause of fire, Smokey's friends don't play with matches became the national slogan. As part of a nationwide effort, new messages are developed every year and used in posters, public service announcements, and fire prevention education programs. The appropriate use of Smokey Bear costumes has allowed the image of Smokey to directly influence children in classrooms and assemblies all over America. To provide recognition for outstanding achievement in the field of wildfire prevention, there are the Smokey Bear Awards. These awards are sponsored by the Ad Council, the National Association of State Foresters, and the U.S. Forest Service. The Oscar of the Smokey Bear Awards is the Golden Smokey Bear Statuette. This award is given to organizations or individuals who have provided sustained, outstanding national service for wildfire prevention. The Silver Smokey Bear Award is given to organizations or individuals that provide outstanding national or regional service for wildfire prevention over a period of at least two years. And finally, the Bronze Smoky Bear Award is given to individuals who provided outstanding regional or statewide service for wildfire prevention over a period of at least two years. Other Smoky Bear Awards include the Smoky Bear Citation, the Smoky Bear Appreciation Award, and the Smokies Helper Patch. Complete details regarding criteria, approval, and procurement of these awards are in the U.S. Forest Service Manual. In 1971, another small orphan bear was found in the Lincoln National Forest, Smokey's former home. It was decided that this little cub would be an ideal successor to the aging Smokey. Special ceremonies welcomed little Smokey as he moved next door to the famous bear. The original Smokey bear died on November 9, 1976, leaving Smokey's heir to fulfill his duties at the National Zoo greeting over three million visitors each year. Smokey, the firefighting bear, either live, in costume, or in print, continues to be an important part of fire prevention in America. My daddy told me when I grow up, I can be a fisherman, just like he is. My daddy told me when I grow up to be careful with campfires, just like he is, and never walk away from one before it's completely out. My daddy told me, when I grow up, to be careful with matches in the forest, just like he is. Daddy, when are you going to grow up? <laughs>